Hello guys, welcome to today's video. I'm back. I've been off for a few weeks. A few things I had going on in the background I had to sort out. But I am back, I'm here. We're gonna carry on with the content, the weekly content, and we're gonna start off with the last look of one of the 1Ds on Retro Review. So this is the 1DS Mark III. This is the last one that I've got for us to show and go through all the nooks and crannies of the camera itself. And then what we're gonna do is start taking them out one by one, once a month, and showing you real wide Im images um, of what they look like, probably using the 200 to 400 mil, just because that's a very versatile lens and it'll work on every single one of my cameras. And we'll look at what the image quality of each one of these looks like moving forward. But first of all, let's get in, let's have a look at this camera, talk through the specs and go from there. So guys, this is the 1DS Mark III. This came out in 2007, so getting on. And uh, when it did come out, this was a $7,000 camera. I just spent £350 on this camera. Um, you can get them even cheaper than that if you want something that you don't care has been beaten up massively. Um, you can pay even more. This came out the same sort of time as the 1D, 1D Mark IV, which was the crop sensor version of this. So you had options when you were a pro back in 2007 of having a full frame camera or a crop camera. Um, this was more for the press when they're doing the big sort of billboard style um, shoots. And then the, the 1D Mark IV was more for the uh, sort of footballs and sports where they wanted that extra bit of speed and didn't, didn't care about having the crop sensor. As I mentioned though, it does have a full frame sensor. This is a 21 megapixel sensor and is five frames per second. So not the fastest, but say you had the 1D Mark um, IV for that if you wanted to go for speed. You have 45 autofocus functions through the viewfinder, 19 of which were high precision cross type, 26 of which are assist AF points. Um, you have a shutter speed of between one eight thousandth of a second all the way up to um, 30 frames a second. And ISO wise, let's look at that now, all the way up to 1,600 ISO. It's not a crazy amount compared to the newer stuff, but back in the day that was actually pretty adequate. Um, card type slots as well. So you've got two card slots in the back here, so you can shoot redundant. This one here has a bit of a sticky door, so I need to two-hand it on that one there we go you've got your CF and you've got your SD card slot on here so it wasn't until the 1DX um, which I do have next to me here when the 1DX came out you then and this also got a sticky door at the moment so we need to have a bit of a clean up but you have your dual compact flash cards and as you can see from them both side by side how much more is going on with um, the newer camera, this is the one stage newer than this one here, 2012, 2007. You've got a bigger screen, this is a three inch LCD screen. And there's a lot more buttons and a lot more things. You've got the live view and everything as well. Um, but let's go back and concentrate on uh, what we've got here with the 1D um, S Mark III. So you say you've got that three inch screen on there. This takes a LP, um, E4 battery, but I've got an E4N because that was what I had lying around that came from the 1DX as a spare that I put in here just so I can test it and run it and everything. Um, you've got, being a 1D, you've got the built-in battery grip along the side here with your shutter buttons both on there and you've also got your mimicked buttons along here as well. Weight-wise isn't too bad, it's 1.2 kilos, so it's not the heaviest body in the world. Um, but yeah, was when I got one of these, um, say it was my second 1D, my first 1D was a Mark III, then I got one of these, and then I got a Mark IV. And this was my favourite for a long time, just because of doing portraits and landscapes and that sort of thing. The image quality you could get on one of these was incredible. And it still is, and we'll go through that at a later date with doing some real world images with this camera and um, showing you what it's physically capable of still in 2023. So. That's an overview of the camera itself. Let's move on and go from there. So that's the whole spec of the 1DS here. It's definitely a camera that I 
when I first started using the 1D range was one of the first ones I used and was something I really, really enjoyed using um, straight out of the box and I got some amazing images from this just because of how good it was at the time. It was my first full frame camera as well that I owned. Um, so learning full frame as well from one of these was absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, let's say the next episode of the retro review will be, we'll go back to the Mark 1. We'll use the 200 to 400 mil. We'll go take some photos with that and show you what the image quality is. And then once a month, go through each of the models until we circle back around to this one here. There's some other content that you guys have been asking for. There's some people have been asking for um, comparison between the 500 mil and the 200 to 400, um, the 7200 and 300 mil, the R7 and how it works on different lenses, the R6 and the same thing. I will slowly be working through those different requests that you guys have put in the comments so thank you for those it does make my life a little bit easier on thinking of what content to do um, as always if anything you think that you'd like to see put it down below any lenses you want me to look at and review again down below someone mentioned the 200 mil f 2.8 so i'm looking at potentially purchasing one of those very soon to review um, the 70 to 300 l lens as well is another one that you don't really see too much on and it'll be nice to review that and compare it to the 200 to 400 and see if you actually need to spend that much money or even get the 100 to 400 and compare it to the 200 to 400 and show you what the difference is between two l lenses but one that costs when it was new eleven thousand pound compared to one that was around two thousand pound so there's a lot to do a lot to look at and the content will be coming um, once a week as always on a sunday so thanks for watching as always comment down below and give us a thumbs up if you like the content thanks for watching as always goodbye